Welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl with me, Annalise, and I get that star of this video and guest star, Oscar. We'll see how long he decides to stay. About a year ago, I introduced you to Agatha, and at that time, I promised you that I would do a more in-depth video about red foot nutrition. Today, I am going to go over with you the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts of their nutrition. Let's get started. You haven't no oh, he's playing with his collar yeah. okay so the cat's going crazy over there but before we get into all the nitty gritties I need to say that I am NOT a tortoise expert nor am I an exotic pet nutrition advisor and I have not had years of experience or specialized training what I and my parents have done is researched as much as we can and then we sifted through all that information and research to find the common threads because let me tell you there is a lot of conflicting information about red foot diets it can get confusing well that's actually true for just about any pet diet if you've done research on proper cat or dog nutrition you've likely run into conflicting information there too obligate carnivores versus opportunistic eaters raw diets semi raw diets all kibble anti-kibble, wet and dry meals. <sighs> because these totally terrific tortoises are not as common as cats and dogs like Oscar who was just here but then got bored and decided to go, we're still figuring out what these guys thrive on. On top of that, just like there is no one diet that is perfect for every single human, there is no one diet that is perfect for every single red foot tortoise. This means that on top of all that research, you're gonna need to do a lot of trial and error to dial in on what's best for your torp. My point is this, do your own research, then do more research. Find the experts that resonate with you, follow their advice, see how it works for your tortoise, and then go from there. And when in doubt, talk to your vet, and then do more research. Did, did I mention that they should do a lot of research? I don't know if that came across. It did. Oh, wonderful. Do your research. As with any pet, not following their proper diet can have significant impacts to the animal's health, and the redfoot tortoise is no exception. The biggest issue that arises from poor or insufficient diets stems from not enough calcium. When this happens, the tortoise will start to pull the calcium from its own bones, and that will result in soft bones and a compromised, weak, uncoordinated tortoise that will die without correct care. Another effect of low or insufficient calcium is that the carapace or the shell of the tortoise doesn't develop properly and can result in something called pyramid. Insufficient calcium is not the only diet related issue that can cause pyramiding. It can also be caused by too much protein, a vitamin D3 deficiency, or just overeating in general. There are non-dietary factors which can contribute to pyramiding and metabolic bone disease. Improper humidity levels and a lack of UVB are among them, but today I'm just going to be focusing on concerns surrounding the red foot diet. The effects on a tortoise having to live with pyramiding can be quite serious and can cause a premature death. The deformities can impact the lungs and therefore the tortoise's ability to breathe normally. It can also cause arthritis and impair the circulation to all the limbs. Paralysis can occur as a result of a misshapen shell, deforming the vertebrae which are fused to the shell. For, fem for adult females, the lack of proper calcium can also make it difficult or even impossible for them to lay eggs or develop eggs with proper shells. What I'm saying is pyramiding is a big deal. While it cannot be reversed, it can be corrected moving forward on future growth. So identifying and addressing it early on is very important. Low calcium in the diet is a surefire way to an unhealthy tortoise. A diet high in oxalates is another, and it too ties back to calcium. Oxalates are a naturally occurring crystalline compound found in many plants. One of its functions is to act as a defense mechanism against chewing bugs. Because it is so common, it is found in many of the foods that you would feed to your tortoise. 
and oxalates have a neat trick of binding to minerals, including, you guessed it, calcium. When the oxalates bind to the calcium, the tortoise is no longer able to utilize that calcium. So even if you feed your tortoise foods high in calcium or dust their food with a calcium powder, if you're not watching the oxalates, then your adorable little tortoise still might end up with a calcium deficiency. As we just talked about, calcium deficiency can cause metabolic bone disease, but it can also cause kidney stones, renal failure, and a whole host of other health issues. So what do you feed your tortoise so that they can live a long, happy life and also to prevent them from looking like the spiny Koopas from the Mario Brothers? Well, let's start with the general information. Even here, you'll find a lot of conflicting information and it starts to get tricky. <laughs> you may get information from your pet store, even ones that specialize in reptiles, or even your vet that applies to tortoises in general, but doesn't hold true for red-footed tortoises. Fruits are the most obvious example of this. For most tortoises, you should avoid a lot of fruit. They are okay as an occasional treat, but should not be part of their regular diet. They are too high in sugar and the tortoise just can't process it well. This causes diarrhea, intestinal flora imbalances, or parasite issues. They just aren't made for it. This is not true for redfoot tortoises, who actually require fruit as a regular part of their diet. So right off the top, their needs depart from what is known as general tortoise nutrition. The contradictions don't stop there, folks. Some websites suggest a diet of about 55% fruits 35% greens, and 10% protein, while others will switch the fruits and the veggies around, suggesting 55% greens, only 35% fruits, and about 10% protein. There are even some that will suggest a 50-50 diet of greens and fruits and then throw in some protein every couple weeks, or once a month, or even not at all. See what I'm referring to? That's a big difference. And let's face it, like I said earlier, tortoises aren't particularly common, so we're still figuring things out. For Agatha, we try to follow a diet of about 55% greens, only 35% fruits and other veggies, and 10% protein. One thing they did align on is the importance of the calcium to phosphorus ratio in their diet. That ratio should be about two to one, two parts calcium to one part phosphorus. The reason calcium needs to be higher in the foods is that the phosphorus, like oxalates, will block the body's ability to utilize the calcium. And, as we've already gone over, calcium is crucial for the tortoise's health. So, why not just try to cut out the phosphorus altogether? Why bother with a ratio? Well, phosphorus happens to be another necessary nutrient that tortoises need, so you can't just cut it out but it does need to be managed just like the oxalates. Supplementing with calcium powder is a great way to get your ratio aligned. You'll never get it 100% perfect every time, but that's okay. Provided that your tortoise is properly hydrated, they should just excrete the extra calcium if there is a little bit too much. Just don't overdo it. And as long as you're in the relative ballpark, you will be fine. Let's look at some examples of some sample meals that I feed her. I've taken a few pics of what I feed Agatha, so let's analyze them and see how the calcium, phosphorus, and oxalates all add up. So remember that we want our meals to have a calcium to phosphorus ratio of two parts calcium to one parts phosphorus. And we also need to be aware of the level of oxalates. And of course, you will need to do some calculations based on the weight of your tortoise and follow the suggestions of how much powder per body weight listed on the label of your calcium powder container. For Agatha's first meal, she has kale, butternut squash, and pineapple. As you can see, the kale has the correct calcium to phosphorus ratio, but the butternut squash and the pineapple don't. When you total up the calcium to phosphorus levels, you get 4.6 to 3, with the phosphorus being at 3. Then the calcium should be at 6, but it's only at 4.6, so we do need to add some calcium powder to bump that up a bit. Now let's look at the oxalates and see how they measure up. Kale is low in oxalates, and both butternut squash and pineapple have none, so I won't be stressing about adding any more calcium powder to her meal based on the overall low levels of oxalates. So looking at this meal as a whole, I would only be adding a small amount of calcium powder to bring up the calcium to phosphorus ratio. Alright, let's check out another meal. 
This meal is romaine lettuce, carrots, and mango. As you can see, none of these have a good calcium to phosphorus ratio. The totals are 3.6 calcium to 4.6 phosphorus. Because the phosphorus is higher, I would definitely be adding more calcium powder to this meal than the last meal. As for the oxalates, the romaine lettuce is low, the mango has none, just the carrots have a moderate amount. But overall, it, this is still pretty low. Since I'm going to be adding calcium powder to correct the calcium to phosphorus ratio, that will be enough. I think you get the idea. Just be aware of the calcium to phosphorus ratios and the levels of oxalates in the foods you are feeding your tortoise, and then correct or adjust those levels with added calcium powder. Most tortoise species are complete herbivores and don't need any supplemental protein. But just like with the fruits, redfoots like to blaze their own trail and do require some protein. But don't overdo it. Too much can cause excessive growth, bladder stones, solidified urates, and liver and or kidney disease. For the small amount of protein that you should feed your redfoot, you've got options. They can and will eat anything. From earthworms, to snails, crickets, dubia roaches, if they are legal where you live, which they are in Canada, and I don't know why. Cooked eggs, and for big tortoises, even mice. In the wild, they will feed on carrion, munching away on the rotting meat and bones of any dead animal that they come across. Agatha gets protein in the form of a bit of a hard boiled egg, or occasionally some portobello mushrooms. We have fed her worms, even a butterworm once, and it came out exactly as it went in. It was pretty gross. In doing all this research and comparing it to what we were already feeding Agatha, based on our early preliminary research, we are doing a pretty good job. Phew. There were a couple foods that I've discovered were way too high in either oxalates or phosphorus to allow her to have it all or only once in a blue moon. And of course, these are her favorites, like green peas and tomatoes. The most important thing though seems to be adding a calcium supplement and making sure she's eating a variety of fruits and veggies. She's not happy about the reduced tomato rations, but she's got decades to plan her revenge. Should, should I be worried? Of course not, you're too sweet and gentle to hurt me. Yes you are. Another thing that I found interesting was the varied suggestions about the feeding schedule. How often should you feed your tortoise? Um, every day sounds right, doesn't it? I mean, when I lived in Virginia, I had two amazing aquatic turtles, Tulip and Tiger Lily, and we fed them every day. If we even thought about being stingy on food for just a second, they let us know. Well, for redfoots, it's actually advised that you don't feed your adult tortoise every day. Some websites advise two days feeding, two days off, three days on, one day off, five days on, two days off, six days on, one day off. Again, lots of perspectives to sift through. The concept behind the day of fasting is that it uses up the tortoise's stored, stored reserves and prevents overfeeding, which as you'll call, is one of the main causes of pyramiding. I should also mention that Agatha is over a year old now, so while she is still small and has lots of growing to do, she is technically an adult, and the amount of food and calcium we give her now, plus how often we feed her, is calculated based on the needs of an adult tortoise. Hatchlings and tortoises within their first year have different nutritional and husbandry requirements. For example, babies should be fed every day. Agatha has a very healthy appetite and loves eating. It was not fun switching her to missing a day of feeding every week. I guess we all have things that we should do but don't want to, even though they're good for us. Like, my dad needs to eat more leafy greens. Kale was not a good idea. <laughs> My mom needs to stay away from dairy and gluten. And me? Well, I need... Um... Actually, I don't mind my leafy greens. And I can eat dairy and gluten, so I guess... 
practically perfect in every way. All right, I think that's enough for today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the ups and downs and the more complicated side of red foot nutrition. Again, I can't stress this enough. You need to do lots of your own research and then apply that knowledge to your specific tortoise. I put a bunch of links in the description below that I found helpful. Red-footed tortoises are amazing pets with a lot of personality and they deserve the best care that we can give them. Agatha and I thank you for joining us today and Oscar thanks you too. Please don't forget to check out my other videos and follow me on Instagram. And as always, please remember to like, so hit that thumbs up button, comment, share, and subscribe, and remember to nurture all nature. Goodbye! So, what do you feed your tortoise to for a... Hmm. Oh, that actually was quite loud. We sifted through all that research and nails ow tortoise and then we sifted th i need a little button that i can start and stop it from here yeah they they lost the remote that can do that we have a remote that can do that well it used to but the original owners of this lost it oh yeah right because we got that used up okay mm -hmm.